na to do ghusl to do ghusl uh, bath now because will be maybe someone if, if you put ihram on from your home you can do ghusl and then immediately you can start you know your ihram if you do from airport it will not maybe sometimes it is not you know as easy from uh, airport or from the plane to do ghusl it will uh, so um, before you leave your house you will do ghusl and that will be enough for you inshallah so when you now if you do not uh, do ihram at the time when you do ghusl when you put ihram on you should do at least wudu ablution so you do wudu and you'll put your ihram on now uh, then you will do niyyah uh, intention for umrah and you will put your ihram on so I'll mention step by step. So first, you know, uh, for example, we are putting a haram on from uh, airport. So we do ghusl at home. We clean ourselves as much as possible. We uh, take our everything, go to the airport, you know, put our luggage and do boarding. After our boarding, we make, maybe you can go to the masjid, you know, the prayer room. And uh, then we can change our ihram clothes. So for men, ihram is two white piece, uh, two pieces of white clothes. For women, they can do their normal clothing. Uh, so for men, it will be it's called izar and rida. The two uh, a piece of clothes called izar and rida. It will be unseen and it shouldn't be in any any dark color. No especially harm for ladies. Any normal clothing as per Islamic Sharia can be used uh, as enough for them. So when we are ready to put our ihram on and start the niyyah for Umrah, what we'll do, we'll pray to rakat sunnah salah. We'll pray to rakat sunnah salah, it is called sunnatul ihram. Sunnatul ihram. So this is the first job we'll be doing for our Umrah. So we'll pray to rakat sunnah salah, it is recommended to recite Kuliya Ihal Kafirun Surah Kafirun at the first rakah and Surah Ikhlas Kulhu Allahu Ahad in the second rakah. So we'll pray to Rakat Salah, uh, you know, before that we'll put our ihram on, we'll, put, we'll show a demonstration, a demonstration to you how to put the ihram clothes on. So we'll put our ihram clothes on, pray to Rakat Salah, obviously we'll do before, and, and then uh, we'll uh, pray, recite Qul Yael the first rakat, Qul Allah wa in the second rakat. After Salah finish, we'll make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this journey easy for us. And it's a, it's a, a, a blessed time for your dua to be accepted as well. So make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that, you remove anything in your head, to, uh, in your heart, or uh, in ihram clothes, whatever, whatever it is, you remove uh, from your head for men, and you recite and the intention. Intention for Umrah, you may recite in Arabic, or in, in English, or in your own language, whatever. And you prefer, it is preferable to say in Arabic, the Prophet said, you can say, Labbaika Umratan, very briefly that, I am doing, you know, uh, I'm, I'm being in the state of Ihram uh, for Umrah. Or you can say, Allahumma inni uridu al-umrata fayassirha li wa taqabbalha minni. O oh Allah, I am intending to perform Umrah. So please make it easy for me and accept it from, from me. So this is the intention you did. And then you'll be reciting Talbiya three times. Talbiya three times. And by reciting Talbiya, you will be in ihram. So what is the talbiyah? Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik Inna alhamda wal ni'mata laka wal mul La sharika laka Can you all recite together once inshallah? Say after me Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik Labbaik إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك. So this is the talbiya. Whenever we decide, we should decide it three times. So the first, when we do the, the niyat, and now we'll be reciting this talbiya three times. Look at the meaning of the talbiya. لبيك اللهم لبيك. Here I am, O Allah, here I am. 
لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك Here I am, O oh Allah, no partner you, do you have. Inna alhamda, verily all the praises, wal ni'mata, and the bounty is yours, laka, wal mulk, and all kingdom is yours, dominion is yours, la sharika lak, you do not have any partner and associates. So, why do we say I am here? Whenever we say I am here, meaning that someone called me, I came and said I am present, I am here. So this is a spiritual Again, uh, you know, uh, response to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When, uh, when the Khalilullah, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, built the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him, O oh Ibrahim, adhim fin nas bil hajj. Call people to come and visit this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hajj. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked, O oh Allah, how can I you know, reach people with, you know, without any, at the time they did not have a television or radio or even microphone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, your job is to call, my job is to reach to people. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he went into the near mountain in Mecca and he said, oh people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling you for hajj, so respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did miraculously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this you know, uh, sound of Ibrahim alayhi salam heard to all the people in the world. All the people in the world, not only that, even those people who were not born at that time, in, 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 and they are in Alami Arwah, in the, in, a, in the world of spirit, everyone heard that voice. And this is the response we do when we go there, we say, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, Oh Allah, you call us through your Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, we have you know, responded today, and I am here, Ya Allah. So this is a spiritual response to the call of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that he did when he, he when he built the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amra Zalachuna Khurat Islam preparation will be a fare. Amra Umra preparation nage, physical preparations at a no katita, soul katita, shuril clean horta, shuril, obanchito loom zegulase, yula katita, clean horta, clean horia, gushal, balauri of nation, gushal horta. Jetu Amra Mikato Gushon Hortam Farta Mela, Gorta Gushon Horia Barizimo, Ehram of Hakoram Shabu Findiba, the Gushon Horia Hurna Alhamdulla, the Logaloga Nahor and the Zerzoma of Neham Hor Findiba, Oshuma Ozu Horbano Yahori, Ozu Horia, Ehram of the Tukra Hor Findiba, Findia Durah Namaz Foriba, Namaz Foria, Afne Salam Feria Langs and Duahola, Duahora for Amne, Niat for Baumra Lagi, then Alami, Tumargo, Umra for Balagi, Rada for Niatura, Malatumukobul for Mau, Arshos Horido. Erbade Afne Talbia Foliva, the Talbia Brafolam, Timber Talbia Folile, Afna Afne Hamar Mitra Maigela. Erbade Mohila Hola, normal Hafor, the Puru Hafor Chen Gora Lactona, Transe Hafora Seo Hafolo, and Afuibo. There are some ruling regarding Talbia. Whenever you decide Talbia, recite intensively. With a, with a concentration uh, that we, you are responding to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is you know, a sunnah to recite it frequently you know so when, wherever you are moving from one place to another or you know if you are not doing anything keep reciting talbiya until you reach Makkah al-Mukarrama men recite loudly uh, women recite softly so for women they shouldn't recite loudly they will be reciting it softly uh, we need to you know, remember that this is a, a response to the call given by Ibrahim alayhi salam. And another important thing is that whenever when we recite talbiya, everything around us recite talbiya as well. Subhanallah. This is something spiritual as well. We don't understand. However, all the animals, trees, everything, you know, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the you know people in uh, the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are on the travel of Hajj and Umrah. Whenever they recite Talbiya, everything around them recite Talbiya as well. So keep reciting Talbiya till you enter Masjid Al-Haram, the uh, house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there are some things that are permitted in Ihram. Use of umbrella. You can uh, use umbrella, although in other madhab I see, I've seen that you know, it is not allowed to use umbrella. In our Hanafi madhab, you can use umbrella. You can change ihram, meaning that you can the, change the clothes of your ihram. Some people think that if you put it on, you cannot change it anymore. No, you can't change it. 
for example, if, if you've been to bathroom and you, you know, think something <laughs> put on your haram clothes, you can change it. And it's, it's, it's good that, you know, when you enter into Masjid Haram, after you arrive in Mecca, when you go to hotel, do shower, ghusl, change your ihram, put new clothes on because you are going to, you know, enter into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can take ghusl, however, you can, it's not allowed to use any soap. You can wash your ihram and reuse, you know, uh, especially for Hajj, when you'll be, you'll be in ihram for three, four days, you may change your ihram clothes and you may wash it and reuse it again. You can use your wash, you know, wash, you can wash your face, you can uh, perform wudu whenever you need in your, while you're in your ihram. You can, uh, you know, use shade if necessary, you can, you know, stand up, you know, below any shade. You can use belt, wallet, etc. You can uh, wear sleepers, not shoes, not trainer for men. For women, uh, everything they can use it. You can take any injection if needed. You can use medication. You can you know, go through any operation if needed. Uh, you can remove any tooth if it is needed. Use, you can use miswak. You can see in the mirror. So these are the things that is uh, permitted in Ihram. Also, you can uh, use blanket. However, you cannot cover your head. For women, they cannot cover their face. For men, they cannot cover their head and their face. So you cannot cover your face and head at all. For men, for women, they cannot cover their face at all. Uh, you can, you are allowed to kill any poisonous animal or insects. You know, uh, use of silver rings for men, and no harm if you get hurt. You know, so you know, even sometimes people get injured and think, oh, my ihram may be broken. No, your uh, ihram will not be. Uh, broken by this. So, Amra Ihramar Bidra Zadinisha Hall, Talbia Kisuguru Hall, Amra Alasana for Sidon, Talbia Forida, Zuria Forida, but I don't like Mohila Hole, Astesta Forida, Talbia continued frequently for the Barbar for the Tata, Monohot and Talbia Shahuita, Ibrahim Ali Slam the Dark Disla, or the Hot Jababa Midiram, after Talbia for the Nashabar of Zadisha says, Shop Zadisha, Talbia for the Subhanallah. Arab as an issue, Lugia. আরটা <laughs> Nasib is another boat bolo, as the niche, Amra Monorata Mita. Amne Mosida Hamabitra Maria for Zondo, Talbia Porta Data, Talbia Mazakis, the Nishola, and use for Tobam Satis, for Tobama Rodilagi, Pamegolagi, Amne Hamar for change for Tobama Provision Ile, Amne Bushel for Tobama, Shabanis for Tobartana, Amne Hamar for Duita for Babong, Abar use for Tobarba, Amne her face wash for Tobarba, Gormolagi Bemlo, Jacuna Carone. আমরা ওদু ওদু করতে পারবা কোনো অসুবিধা নাই আমরা সায়ার তোলে ওইটা পারবা বেল্ট ওয়ালেট এগুলা ইউজ করতে পারবা স্লিপার ফিনতে পারবা স্যান্ডেল যেটা বেটা ইনতো লাগি ফিনতে পারবা ঔষধ বা ঔষধ যেটা দুধ জিনিস আমরা ইউজ করতে পারবা মিসওয়াক ইউজ করতে পারবা এবং এটা সুন্নাত আল্লাহর রাসূল সাল্লাল্লাহু আলাইহি ওয়া সাল্লাম এটা সুন্নাত লাগি মিসওয়াক ইউজ করা আমরা এটা চেষ্টা করতাম বিশেষ করে ওমরা সফর অধিকার এটা হাবিব বানাই লেওয়া যায় আল্লাহ উলামা কোলা কোন যে মানুষ হলে রেগুলার মিসওয়াক ইউজ করেন এরা মোতর সময় কলিমা নসিব হোক সুবহানাল্লাহ ইমান নসিব হয় যারা মিসওয়াক রেগুলার ইউজ করেন আপনি মিরর ইউজ করতে পারবা এখন আমার ভিতরে কোনো অসুবিধা নাই ব্ল্যাঙ্কেট ইউজ করতে পারবা মনে করে কোন সময় আমরা যে আমার খাবার ফিন্দি ঠান্ডা গরম মনে করে গর্তে যদি আপনি ফিন্দি বাড়ি নিয়ত করে বাড়ি যান যদি নিয়ত করে না যদি আপনি সেটা ফিন্দি করে কোনো অসুবিধা নাই গর্তে যদি নিয়ত করে বাড়ি যান তখন আপনার কোনো জাতীয় স্লাইজ যদি কোনো খাবার ফিন্দি করতে না সুতরাং আপনি যদি ঠান্ডা লাগে উপরে এক্সট্রা ব্ল্যাঙ্কেট ফিন্দি করবা প্লেনের মাঝে আপনি এক্সট্রা ব্ল্যাঙ্কেট ফিনতে পারবা আপনি হোটেলের মাঝে এক্সট্রা ব্ল্যাঙ্কেট ইউজ করতে পারবা ঠান্ডার লাগি আপনার ডুমেট বা লেফট যেটা ইউজ করতে পারবা কোনো অসুবিধা নেই তবে পুরুষের লাগে লাগে আপনার ফেস এবং মাথা কোনো সময় ঘুরতে পারতো না মহিলা আপনার লাগে মুখ ঘুরতে পারতো না ওখানে হারামের ভিতরে কোন জিনিস হল হারাম প্রথমত এনি ফিজিক্যাল রিলেশনশিপ বিটুইন হাজব্যান্ড এন্ড ওয়াইফ হারাম এই দা ফিজিক্যাল অল ভারবল ইভেন ইউ নো এই জাতীয় কোনো হতা বার্তা এই জাতীয় কোনো মাত হতা কোনোটা অ্যালাউড নয় সম্পূর্ণ হারাম এই জাতীয় কোনো যে কোনো সম্পর্ক 
হাজবেন্ড এন্ড ওয়াইফের মাঝে যত সম্পর্ক এহরাম যত সময় আছে এটা সম্পূর্ণ রূপে হারাম সুতরাং ডিজায়ার মাধ্যমে যে খেলা টচ করেন সোয়েন কিস করেন সম্পূর্ণ সব হারাম হইবো এটা করতে পারতো না সো দ্য ফার্স্ট থিং দ্যাট ইজ হারাম ইন এহরাম ইজ এনি এনি ফিজিক্যাল রিলেশনশিপ বিটুইন হাজবেন্ড এন্ড ওয়াইফ ওয়াদার ইট ইজ ভার্বাল অর ইট ইজ ফিজিক্যাল অল কাইন্ড অফ রিলেশনশিপ ইজ হারাম উইথ ডিজায়ার until they are halal and until they are completed their you know umrah fighting or arguments is haram so you are not allowed to fight or argue you know when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the quran about hajj he mentioned uh, the fala rafatha wa la fusuqa wa la jidala fil hajj no uh, sexual relationship no uh, any kind of sins or disobedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no fighting no fighting now we understand from this quranic ayat you know people are not going there for fight they're not going for argument however because shaitan knows if you argue if we fight our umrah or hajj i know will not get any sawab from this this is why you will be you will see that you will be very much tempered you will be very much short tempered and you will do argue very frequently you will get angry very frequently so at that time you need to discipline yourself you need to control yourself that we need to remember i am in a ihram you know when you go to your airport you see people you know misbehaving mistreating you not you know respecting you you shouldn't get angry you shouldn't you know uh, abuse them you shouldn't you know, say anything harsh to them if you say harsh to anything to them if you argue if you fight then you lose the reward the sawab of your ihram and it's happened very frequently because shaitan comes in our mind and you know try to make us you know angry Uh, at that time because we lose our you know reward disobedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam anything and you know, lying listening to anything haram or whatever and any kinds of sin looking at haram thing whatever it is haram it's always haram and in the state of ihram it is more haram it is more severe in punishment you know if if you do any disobedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we are in in ihram cutting or removing of hair from in any any body part if you remove any part of your uh, um, from any part of your body any hair or any uh, you know uh, remove any any nails anything it is haram you cannot remove any hair so this is why it's very important while you are in ihram to be cautious very carefully that you do not you know scratch your body scratch your head scratch your beard that may cause you know hair hair fall or we are fall so you need to be very careful while you are in ihram uh, so these are thing in, in haram in ihram so amar chana khorsi jen amra argument khora kono maramari khora khelor torka khora jure khota khwa khelor shokto kono khota khwa eta allow na ihram er bitre khub careful dakam allah ebong allah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam er adesh birudhi কোনো পাপর খাম গুনার খাম করা এটা সম্পূর্ণ সব সময় গুনা এহরামার অবস্থা এটা রক্ষ গুণ বেশি হয়ে যায় আপনার শরীর দিয়ে কোনো চুল কোনো দাড়ি কোনো নখ এটা খাটতে পারত না ফালাইতে পারত না এমনকি হাজরাইদের সময় আপনার খেয়াল করতা তারপর শরীর দিয়ে কোনো চুল বা এরকম কিছু শরীরে পড়ত না পুরুষ কন্টিনিউ উইথ নট পারমিটেড ইন এহরাম সেভেন ক্লোজ ফর ম্যান সো ম্যান ক্যান নট ওয়ার এনি কাইন্ডস অফ সেভেন ক্লোজ meaning that any vest underwear you know or any 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 you know shirt with anything that is you know sewn for your body it will not be allowed so only two pieces of clothes for men nothing else in your whole body so you cannot use turban cap hat uh or socks or gloves for men it's not allowed footwear which cover your ankles and you know on top uh, top side of your of uh, of your feet so you you will be allowed to use only the you know the sandals uh we mentioned only you cannot use you know uh shoes that cover your whole foot or you know chain or anything like this it is not allowed to use them it is not allowed to use any perfume or perfumed clothes so you will not be allowed anything that has perfume you will not be uh, allowed to talk re- anything related to marriage as i mentioned before hunting of land animals is not allowed uh, while you are in ihram so you will not be uh, using 
any soap that has you know, uh, uh, perfume in it, any if any tissue, if it is perfume, you should not use it. If, if you shouldn't, you shouldn't use any wipes that has uh, perfume in it. You need to remember that. So, purushon lagi salai kona kuna khapor finta varta na. Toki ba fagli ita di kono kuchu finta varta na. Socks finta varta na, gloves finta varta na. Amon suda finta varta na jada faru for guri lai. Ehram aur niyot kora bhatta ke ar kuno ator ba perfume ita di kuchu use varta varta na. Tel shaban ita use varta varta na. So combing. To avoid hair fall, it is allowed to comb your hair or beard because it may cause your uh, uh, hair fall. So you shouldn't use it. Hair fall during wudu, you need to be very careful. We shouldn't rub our beard uh, or our hair when we do wudu because it may cause our hair fall. It, it is not allowed to use oil. You cannot use any oil for. Uh, you, can, you, you are not allowed to use ihram in dark color. You shouldn't cover your face and head for men. For women, only covering your face. So you're not allowed to covering your face. For women, also for women, they shouldn't cover uh, their hands, meaning they shouldn't, you know, wear any gloves. So they are not allowed to wear gloves, and they shouldn't, uh, they could have, cannot cover their face. Now this is. On the way, we are on the way to Ihram, uh, on the way to Umrah. So we arrived in Makkah al Mukarramah, I know, uh, from Jeddah to Makkah, wherever we, however we go. We went into a hotel, we changed our clothes, we uh, do ghusl, better to ghusl, and we'll be uh, no, at all when to go for Umrah to enter into Masjid al Haram. So, uh, inshallah, we'll go to the next stage. To enter into the Masjid al-Haram. Before that, you know, from your home until you arrive in the hotel in Makkah al-Mukarramah, does anyone have any questions in the in this journey from your home to a uh, hotel? Is there any question? ये <laughs> 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 ফাইভ <laughs> 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 Yes. Do you know if your hair falls, what do you do? Like if you just like, pretend you're doing wudu or something, and you're like, yes. I fall back into your hand or something, what should you do? If it is unintentional and you're in a, only a little bit, it will not be a problem. However, it's better to give some sadaqah as, as, a, as a, you know, a compensation. So we'll be mentioning that, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. So we are uh, moving into the next stage. Now, alhamdulillah, we have. Uh, if, if, if there was time and to, to take rest, we are, you know, sorted everything in the hotel. Now it's time for us to go and, and enter into the Masjid al-Haram. So when we enter into the Masjid al-Haram, there's a recommended dua that when you enter the gate of the Masjid, you enter with the right foot. Not only for Masjid al-Haram, for any Masjid around the world, whenever you enter the Masjid, you put your right foot first and you make a dua. The dua is... Uh, at least you should say Allah muftahli abwaab rahmatik If you can say, you add Bismillah Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Allahumma gfili dhunubi Allahumma muftahli abwaab rahmatik Bismillah in the name of Allah So you are taking Allah's name when you are entering the masjid Then you say, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Salat and salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma gfili dhunubi Oh Allah, please forgive my sins is a good chance you are entering a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and the dua should be accepted at that time. So you say, Allah, please forgive my sins. And you say, Allah, maftah li abu abu rahmati. Oh Allah, open the doors of mercy, or open the doors of rahmah for me. Then you enter into the masjid. This is the adab, etiquette of entering to any masjid. So this is a, a picture of masjid haram So the whole area, the, the uh, border we are seeing, the building, it is masjid haram So there are many gates to enter into uh, masjid haram We'll be using, you know, uh, whichever is you know, feasible for us, you know, convenient at that time with our group. We'll be entering the masjid haram and when we go to the gate of the masjid haram we'll recite this dua. Now, after that, we'll be proceeding to Kaaba. As, as you can see on the uh, picture, Kaaba is you know, very far from the gate. So maybe you enter from one of these gates from here, and you walk through the Masjid al Haram to reach to the Kaaba. It takes oh, a few minutes to walk to there. When you go in front of the Kaaba, you, when you see the Kaaba, the dua is accepted. Now, the etiquette says whenever you see the Kaaba, Dua is accepted. Now you should think which dua should I make at the time. You know, this is a very good chance. Whenever you see the Kaaba, whatever dua I make, it will be accepted. Now, some scholars uh, you know, mentioned to say, Allah man salam, uminka salam, hayyina rabbana bis salam. Oh Allah, you are source of peace. You are peace. Peace is from you. Make my life peaceful. This is one of the you know, uh, good dua. Or you can say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab anna. O Allah, grant me goodness in this world and grant me goodness in the hereafter. So you are covering your whole life, this life and the life after. You know, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi taught a beautiful dua. He used to say, O Allah, please accept all the dua I will make in this journey and throughout my life. O Allah, please accept all the dua I will make in this journey and throughout my life it is accepted then whatever dua will be doing in your whole life it will be accepted subhanallah so amra je shomoy kaba sharifo hamaibal lagi ek masjid haram o jai masjid haram o gate o hamaibal shomoy line bhodi amaita khali ra masjid haram o lagi na je kono masjid o lagi amra hamaibal shomoy bismillah assalatu was salam ala rasulillah allahumma fi li dhunubi allahumma iftah li abwa wa rahmati o dua o da fodi da at least Allah Maftahli Abu Abu Rahmati or the Fodi, the Fodi Amaila, Amaya Musu Hamad Bitti, the Gia Kavashu for Handa Jaiba, Kavashu is a show Dehbash with Dwako Bolo, Ishamoy Afne Shundodik and Dwapoloka, Allah Hokbar Hoga, Laila Illa, or Illa Hilham, Allah Shukriya de Hoga, Allah Tasbia de Hoga, Ever the Allah Manda Salam in Kasalam, Taba Fahina Robana Bissalam, Allah Afne Shanti, Afra Pokudi Shanti, I, Allah Marjibon to be Shanti Horiado. It a beautiful dua for them very. Arda dua for the Rabbana Athena Fidunia Hasana, of the Akhira the Hasana, the Mokina Adab and Nar, Allah Duniato, Amare Mongolan Hor Kolanda and Horo, and Akhira Tomalagi Kolanda and Horo, Amare Jahana Ragundaki, Hafazot Horo, with the Abraham Aro, the Totu Abramonai, Shoshon Kipto Shomoe, Short Shomoe of Ned, Iduavon, Hortafarwa. So we will come to around the Kaaba and we see the Mataf, the area that people do uh, Tawaf around the Kaaba is called Mataf. So we see the area, we come closer and now we will you know, uh, know the, some of the aspects around the Kaaba. Now, wherever we get down, you know, from any area, this, these are the, some gates, you know, uh, around the Kaaba that we may enter through the Kaaba from any of these gates, or to, or towards around uh, uh, any of these gates. Wherever you come from, you have to come in front of Hajar Aswad. What is Hajar Aswad? Hajar Aswad is a black stone in the corner of the Kaaba, 
it has been mentioned that this Hajar Aswad, the uh, meaning is black stone. It was white, and it was whiter than the milk. It came with Adam alayhi salam, the first human being, Adam alayhi salam. When he came, the, the, he brought uh, with the, this stone from Jannah, from heaven. And it was whiter than the milk. And the Prophet saw mentioned that, the, you know, by taking the sins, by taking away the sins of human being, this Hajar, this you know, stone has become black, subhanAllah. So whoever goes there, kiss the Hajar Aswad, their sins will be taken by Hajar Aswad. So Hajar Aswad, Amra Khalafatur, Amra Zani, but Adam alayhi salam Allah gaya, he is a best Allah Rasul for my son, the Hajar Aswad, the Shadasil, and the Manshur, Gunnar, Tanah Harone, the Hajar Aswad, Khalaw, he says, subhanAllah. And for Amra Hajar Aswad, the Shamne gaya, the Ibar Age, Amra Niyot Khurnu Tawafur. Haram Sharif wa Hamanir Bade, Amra Fala Hamalu get to Afra. Here I grew a mouse for Tamna. Zodi no mother Shomo is at the mouse for Mu, and Nile Amra Potom Hamalu get to Afra, Nukuno, Nafol Namas, Nutomas Kitchen for Tamna, Palagio to Afra Dolege, he got a Hutchabolo duty. So it is our first duty to do Tawaf whenever we go in Masjid al Haram. However, if it is time for Salah, for any fourth Salah, then we'll pray for Salah, otherwise, we'll go and start our Tawaf. When we get down into the mataf, first we'll make a niyyah. The niyyah is, we'll say, Allahumma inni uridu tawafa baytika al-haram sab'ata ashwatin lillahi ta'ala fayassir huli wa taqabbal hu minni. Oh Allah, I'm making intention to do tawaf around your Kaaba, you know, uh, with seven uh, shout, with seven round, please accept it from me and make it easy for me. So this is the dua, this is the niyyah. For tawaf. After that, we'll go in front of the uh, Hajar Aswad. You know, it is sunnah to kiss the Hajar Aswad with your lips. However, it's not possible, we know. Uh, if, you, if it is not possible, then you touch Hajar Aswad with your hand and you kiss your hand. If it is not possible, you touch it with something, then you kiss it. Even if it is not possible, then you point to the Hajar Aswad like this and then you kiss your hand. At the time, you say, uh, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamdu, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. You praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these words, and you do this Allahu Akbar. And you start your tawaf. So tawaf will be doing, you know, leaving, uh, keeping Kaaba on, on our left hand side, anti-clockwise, will be going around the Kaaba. So this is Hajar Aswad, this is how it looks like. You know, you know the, uh, the part in, in, in the middle, the black you know, thing, this is Hajar Aswad. Many, many people kiss on the sides. However, this is not Hajar Aswad. This is the cover uh, we, you know, they put outside the Hajar Aswad. Hajar Aswad is the black thing in, inside. So if you can kiss, you put your mouth in there. Uh, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant every one of us a chance to go and kiss the Hajar Aswad, inshallah. Now, this is uh, Multazam, which is the door of Kaaba. <coughs> the door of Kaaba, and dua is accepted at the door of Kaaba. People go there and you know, uh, hang on the door and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is like, you know, oh Allah, I came to your door. Please forgive my sins. Please accept my all you know, efforts and everything. So it's a very good chance for you to uh, accept your to your dua to be accepted. This is uh, uh, the door of the Kaaba. Then, uh, moving you know, a bit forward, after the door we see Maqam Ibrahim. What is Maqam Ibrahim? Maqam Ibrahim is a stone that came again from heaven, came from Jannah, and it came for Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi when he built the Kaaba. He needed ladder, so at that time he did not have any ladder. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you know, sent this uh, stone from heaven. Ibrahim Al Islam used to stand on that stone, and when, while he needed to go up, the stone used to enlarge automatically. Subhanallah, is a uh, you know, of Ibrahim Al Islam. The stone used to get enlarged, and he would reach on top. Then he would, whenever he needed to get down, the stone used to come down, and. Uh, so what happened is after he completed his work, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
kept a, a footprint of Ibrahim salam on that stone. Again, this is another mujaza. If you stand on a stone for maybe three, four years, it will not leave any mark on a stone or a rock. However, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam's you know, uh, footprint, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to see and you know, reflect upon from this you know, historical event. This is why there is a footprint of Ibrahim alayhi salam on the maqam, on the stone. So this is covered by like this with glasses. And uh, so we'll go and see it, you know, when we go there, inshallah. <coughs> then uh, this is another part of, uh, after, after that we'll, we'll see the uh, Hatim. The Hatim is a part of the Kaaba, outside the Kaaba. It was, you know, before it was including in the Kaaba. When the people of Mecca, the Quraysh, before the Prophet Sallallahu prophethood, uh, he, when he was about 35 years old, the people of Mecca rebuilt the Kaaba, and they did not have enough money to you know, include the whole building. This is why they left, they left a bit of the Kaaba uh, and outside, so they could not put it inside the Kaaba, and this is the place we call Hatim. Now, if you go there, it is, uh, you know, we have to go around the Hatim as well for our Tawaf to be completed. But we can go into the Hatim. We can go into the Hatim and make, you know, pray Salah or make Dua. And if anyone enters into Hatim, it will be, you know, uh, it will be as he has entered into the Kaaba. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So this is a wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people could not complete that part. They left it out. So for us, if we go there, it is possible for us to go there. If we enter into there, then we are entering into the Kaaba. Subhanallah. If we pray there, it is like we are praying inside the Kaaba. So, uh, now we are going to explain how to do the Tawaf and around the Kaaba. So, for uh, Tawaf, we made intention, we have gone in front of the Hajar Aswad, we raise our hands like this, and Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd, and then kiss our hand, and then we'll start walking. You know, anti-clockwise, keeping Kaaba on our left hand side. For Tawaf, it is required to have Udu all the time. It is like Salah, you cannot pray without Udu, similarly you cannot do Tawaf, it's wajib to have Udu all the time. If any time your wudu breaks, you have to leave and go do it, perform your wudu again, come back, and wherever you, you know we left from, you can restart from there. You can resume from there. You don't have to start again all over again. You just come back and resume from here and complete your seven and you know, uh, a round. So for one tawaf, you have to do seven round. So when once you finish seven round, your tawaf will be completed. You make niya before you start your tawaf. So this is the corner of Hajar Aswad is. From that side of the building, there will be green light to show you where the Hajar Aswad, which corner of Hajar Aswad is. So you go in line with the green light. You, you know, put your back on the green light, face to the Kaaba, to the corner of the Kaaba where Hajar Aswad is. You raise your hand. And you start your tawaf. So this is showing which way is from the and the green light is coming from. Now some of the ruling uh, from tawaf begin with your uh, right foot in line with the black stone. Lift your hands, palms facing black stone. Beside Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd. And you uh, kiss your hands, start first three shout to be performed in quick steps for Ramal. For men, first three, uh, well, before that I forgot to mention that, you know, you will expose our right shoulder for all the seven tawaf. So before we make intention, whenever we get into the mataf, we'll, you know, uh, put our uh, ihram clothes under our uh, right arm. So we'll be exposing our right shoulder and putting the hand on the left shoulder. So uh, before we will do that, and then we'll start our tawaf. For first three rounds, 
will be Ramal. Ramal is in a jog to run faster, to walk faster, will be running faster. However, because of the you know, crowd, will not be able to run as fast as possible. However, we'll just, just pretend and jog as much as we can. Now, this again, historical uh, event, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he migrated from Mecca to Medina, and he went back after six years, after uh, seven years, and he did Umrah. At that time, the people of Mecca, the Quraysh, the non-believers, the Kuffar, they started saying, oh, the people, of, you know, because the weather of Medina made the Muslims weak. The Prophet got it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, got the news. He told the companions, let's show that non-believers that we are not weak. Let's show our muscles. Let's show our strength. So to show their strength and their muscle, they run and they uncover their right shoulder. So this is again a sunnah left for us. Although there are no non-believers there at the moment, however, just to you know, remember that legacy of the Prophet and the companions, we you know, do a jog and show our muscles at the time. So for tawaf, must be in the state of wudu. Don't overlook your starting point. Praise Allah subhanahu in tawaf. So in tawaf, you know, only one dua, as we mentioned the hadith, other duas are recommended by the scholars that you can recite if you know it's better to recite them. If you do not know or if you cannot recite them by even by looking, you can recite anything, any, any verse, verse of the Holy Quran, any dua in your language or you know, in Arabic, you can keep reciting. This, this is a place for dua to be accepted. So you should keep reciting and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can recite the Holy Quran. You can recite any dua. You can recite any tasbih. Any subhanallah, alhamdulillah, ilaha illallah, whatever you know. You can keep reciting. You can recite even the short surahs that you know by heart. You can recite them at the time. Between the Yemeni corner and Black Stone. The corner before uh, Hajar Aswad, the Black Stone, is called uh, uh, Rukni Yemeni. From Rukni Yemeni to Hajar Aswad, the Prophet ﷺ recommended the dua is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab anna You made wa dukhilna al jannatam ala barar Ya Aziz wa ya Ghaffar ya Rabbal Alameen So this is the dua we'll be reciting inshallah between Rukhna Yemeni and Hajar Aswad On completion of each round Stand in line with the black stone again and raise your hands and facing the black stone and reciting Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Lillahi Alham. So every time you complete one, one round, come back to Hajar Aswad again, you know, face to the Hajar Aswad, raise your hand, say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Lillahi Alham, kiss your hand, start for the next round. So this, this is how you'll be doing for all seven uh, rounds. When we'll be completing seven rounds, you'll be total, you'll have total eight. You know, the uh, kiss, kiss of uh, Hajar Aswad raising hands and it's called Istilam. So eight, eight Istilam and seven rounds. So you start first one, then second, then third. When you complete seven rounds, it will be total eight. Because you, at the beginning you do once, at the end you do once. It is Sunnah to complete the Tawaf continuously, meaning without any break. So we shouldn't give any break between uh, while you are doing tawaf. However, if it is not time for salah, jama stands up, then you may break, give break for the jama'ah. And then after jama, you start again wherever you have stopped. Don't push anyone while in tawaf. You will see many people, you know, coming like this, pushing people around. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, you know, main, main goal is that you are pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, you do not hurt anyone. So if you push anyone, that means you are hurting anyone. And by this, you will you'll, you'll reduce your sawab of tawaf and umrah or hajj. So we shouldn't push anyone. We uh, should be you know, as much as possible without harming or hurting or disturbing anyone else. Don't get angry with anyone if you are pushed. You'll see many sometimes people will push you or even people may step on your feet. Do not get angry. Smile at them and say it's okay. Okay. So we, we should be very careful at that time. Many people get angry. Don't you see like this? No, don't be angry at the time because we have mentioned before, no argument, no fighting, no harming people, no hurting people. All were the journey. 
for a uh, tawaf, you know, keep your position safe. So uh, another uh, good tip is that you shouldn't leave your sandals anywhere. You should have your sandals in your bag wherever you are, you know, having in your bag. So it's better to have the, you know, uh, the bag that can you put on your back or in, on your on your uh, hip. You can tie it on your hip. So you put your uh, small bottle of water. You keep your sandals. You have mobile phone or whatever money or anything, you know, with you all the time. You do not leave it anywhere because you'll not find it when you come back. In Tawaf, you shouldn't bend down to pick up anything. Why? Because because of the crowd sometimes, you know, if you bend down, people may, you know, walk over you. So you shouldn't bend down. Do not rush into the black stone. Uh, many people, you see, push people, you know, and, and to go there, harm people, you shouldn't hurt or harm. If you have chance, by slowly, slowly going there, if you can, you know, inshallah, you can kiss it. For it is recommended, you know, for the first time when you do Umrah, that you shouldn't go at that time to kiss the Hajar Aswad because you have people with you and you will not be able to leave them. And so it's better when you go alone or one or two, three people, you can go, you know, uh, try to go near and kiss it, inshallah. Another important thing is they put, you know, Atar in Hajar Aswad. So while you are in Ihram, you shouldn't you know, use any atar, any perfume. So if you go and kiss there, you may you know, touch atar as well. So it's better, at the state of your haram, it's better not to go and kiss the other aswad, you know, uh, like this. You know, refrain from idle talk. At that time, you are focusing, doing tawaf, you are focusing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no, talking, no, you know, you shouldn't be engaged with anything else other than, you know, reciting the Quran, reciting of Tasbih. You see many people are talking like that, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't start talking like this. You know, you are doing ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should be mindful of that. If your wudu breaks, as I mentioned, you should go and do your wudu. Uh, you should stop the waffle and obligatory prayers begin, and after prayers continue from where you stopped. You may perform tawaf at different floors if necessary. So tawaf can be done in different floors, in the ground, and then also the other other, other floors as well. However, if you don't tawaf on other floors, it takes time because it's, it's become very, you know, uh, big area. Now, when you complete your eight, seven uh, round of tawaf, you pray two rakat wajib salah. According to Hanafi Madhab, it is wajib to pray to rakat salah which is called you know wajibu tawaf wajibu tawaf salah and it should be done in front of maqam ibrahim so if you remember maqam ibrahim is the stone that ibrahim alaihissalam stood up and it is covered with uh, you know glasses so you come in front of maqam ibrahim keep kaaba in front of you <coughs> and you pray to rakat salah niyat is that i'm going to pray to rakat wajibu tawaf salah and then allah akbar facing to the qibla Another important thing that you know, if, if you recite the niyyat in Arabic for salah, we say, Nawaitu an usalliya lillahi ta'ala raka'atay salatil fajri, for example, salatil fajri sunnatu rasulillah ta'ala mutawajjihan ila jihatil ka'badi sharibati, Allahu Akbar. We make this dua that I'm facing towards the qibla, towards the Kaaba. However, when you are in front of the Kaaba, it's, it's better to say, mutawajjihan ila aynil Kaaba. Mutawajjan ila jihad instead of jihadil is a'id al Kaaba, meaning in front of the Kaaba, not towards the Kaaba, in front of the Kaaba. So while you're in the Kaaba, you'll be praying towards the Kaaba. Doesn't matter wherever you are, you make a round facing to the Kaaba and you pray. So at that time, if anyone you know uh, face anywhere else other than Kaaba, their salah will not be valid. So you have to face towards the Kaaba. So you stand up in front of Maqam Ibrahim, keeping Maqam Ibrahim in front of you and Kaaba. In front of you, so that's a video in a bit, inshallah, where the, you know, explaining more about it. And again, in this salah, it is recommended to recite Surah uh, Kafir on Kulia, you will Kafir in the first raka'ah, Kulhu Allah Wahad in the second raka'ah. So, after Tawar finished, 
you put your ihram closed again regularly, normally, covering your right shoulder. You go in front of Maqam Ibrahim, pray to Rakat Salah. When you finish Salah, raise your hands, make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You have done a beautiful job. You have done Qabal of the Kaaba. You have prayed to Rakat Salah. And this is the time for your dua to be accepted. So make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And, uh, and then you stand up to, for next thing to do. You know, uh, side. So due to crowd, you are permitted to pray in any part of the masjid. Do not interrupt a, had, a haji or lead him to wrong by forcing yourself to pray at Maqam Ibrahim. So many people will say that you know, people doing tawaf, they stand up salah. So in, at the time, you, you are disturbing people, interrupting people from their tawaf. So you shouldn't do that. You should go back as, possible, as much possible and you know, leaving Maqam Ibrahim in front to do salah. Even if it is not possible because of the crowd, you can pray anywhere in the masjid. Anywhere in the masjid, this two rakat salah. After that, we will go for sa'i. Sa'i is, you know, walking between Safa and Marwada to mountain. Uh, after praying two rakat salah, follow the sign for Safa. You will see the sign where the green light is for Hadir as well. The same point is, is, the, is the entrance of Safa as well. So where, wherever you, you know, finish pray your two rakat salah, after that you look for the green light and walk towards that green light. So when you green, go to the green light, you will see it says, you know, Bidayat or Safa, the beginning of Safa. You, so you go, you know, walk to that way. And after that, you know, when you go there, you will see Zamzam. Many, you know, tubs are there for Zamzam water. You drink Zamzam water, Sunnah, to drink Zamzam water at the time. Zamzam water, uh, as we know, this is blessed water. It came at the time of Ismail alayhi salam, the baby Ismail alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted the special water. And from that time, it never dried out, subhanAllah. And it will never dry out until Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve and protect this well. You know, millions and millions of gallons of water have been used, taken out every day, but it never dries out. This is, this is one of the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The prophets have mentioned about Zamzam water as Zamzam ulima shuriba. Zamzam water is for whatever it is in, in intended for. So whatever you intentionally make at the drink, at the time of drinking Zamzam water, it is accepted. SubhanAllah. So, so Abdullah ibn Mubarak, one of the great scholars in our religion, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Rahmatullahi alayhi, when, when he went there, he drank Zamzam water and said, Oh Allah, your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, As Zamzamu lima shuriba. Zamzam is for whatever it is intended. Oh Allah, I am making intention and drinking Zamzam water so that you save me from the punishment of hellfire. Subhanallah. It is recommended to make a dua. Bismillah. Walhamdulillah. As-salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa amalan saliha wa rizqan wasi'a wa shifa'an min kulli da. Meaning, Bismillah in the name of Allah. As-salatu wa salamu ala Rasul. Bismillah. Walhamdulillah. All praises belong to Allah. We are thanking Allah. Then you say, As-salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Salat and salam upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a. Oh Allah, I am asking from you useful knowledge. Wa amalan saliha, good deeds, neck deed, no, amal saliha, wa rizqan wasi'a, you know, uh, good provisions, and wa shifa'a min kulida, and cure from every illness. So make dua, you know, intent for your cure for, Ill, for illness, physical, spiritual, every illness, you make intention for that, and you drink some, some water. Other mustahab, act for some, some water is you, you drink some, some water. You know, standing up, not sitting down. For any other drinks, any other water, whatever you drink, it is you know you should drink it by sitting down. Sunnah, because the Prophet wants to drink it by sitting down. For zamzam water, it is mustahab to drink it by standing up and facing to the qibla. So you face to the qibla and drink it while standing up in, in three sips. So you drink it in three sips. It is also mustahab sunnah. Now. After drink, you know, drinking some, some water, we will proceed to Safa. And while we reach to the, in the Safa mountain, we will face to the Qibla again, to Kaaba. You can see the Kaaba from the mountain Safa. You face to the Kaaba, you raise your hands towards the Safa again three times, saying, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Walillah, Al-Am. 
and you kiss, kiss your hand again, you make dua at the time, dua is accepted at the time, you make dua and you start walking towards uh, Marwa, the other mountain. It's a very straight walk, you know, walking distance and you walk straight towards Marwa. So this is the you know, place where we walk through this way. While you know, arriving Safa, while going to the Safa, it is re recommended to recite a Quranic verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran about Safa and Marwa and you start saying Abda'u bima abda Allah bihi I start the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started i.e. by Safa and the, then the, you start the ayat of the Quran Inna Safa wal Marwa ta min sha'airillah Indeed Safa and Marwa are among the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ وِعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاعَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَطَّوَّفَ بِهِمَا So whoever go for Hajj or Umrah, it is you know, uh, not blameworthy for them to walk between them. وَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ And whoever does any, any good deed uh, with, uh, with good willing, with will, willingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is grateful. So meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you reward if you go and do a sa'i between them. This is the dua that you will find in the book of Hajj al-Umrah. I have prepared one, I uh, couldn't print it today inshallah. If anyone want to collect, uh, uh, I, I hope it will be ready by tomorrow so you can collect. Uh, Marwa. When you come to the place which is lit with line of the green lights, move in fast steps until you reach another row of lights which are lit in green color, then walk to Marwa. For men, again, between Safa and Marwa, there are places, you know, uh, uh, normally. Again, uh, before, for Tawaf as well, for women, they will walk normally. For men, they will, you know, fast three, three uh, round, they will run. For, for uh, Sa'i, between Safa and Marwa, for each round, when you go, come to green light, you run all seven rounds like this so this is the uh, walk path between Safa and Marwa from one side people go from other side they come Hamil oh Allah may now have mercy upon those who shave their head after the Umrah after, after the uh, when, uh, when they complete the Umrah or Hajj so the companion asks oh Allah please make dua for the trimmer as well those who trim Again, the Prophet said, Allah, marhamil, muhallifin, oh Allah, please have mercy upon the one who shaved. Again, the companion asked, Ya Rasulullah, please make dua for the people who trim. Again, the Prophet made dua, oh Allah, please have mercy upon the people who have shaved. Three times, the Prophet said, Allah, made dua for the people who shaved. And for the fourth time, he said, oh Allah, please uh, have mercy upon the people who trimmed. So you can see from this, yes, and it is allowed to trim, especially if any, any children, those are going to school and they you know, find it you know, uncomfy going to school like this or you know, they may dream it is not harm and, uh, so after you have completed your umrah and uh, you, you can now change your clothes normal clothes on inshallah let's play the video and then we'll take a question if anyone have any So this is outside the Kaaba and uh, this is outside the Haram. This is the main Haram. You will be entering into any of these gates to go into the Haram. This is the you know, outside of Haram area. Now this is the... So we will be walking with these people in the crowd, inshallah, around the Kaaba. And this part, the white, you know, around uh, the circle, we can see around the Kaaba. This other part that we mentioned is called Hatim. This is the place that they left out. They couldn't you know, include in the Kaaba. So this is in the Kaaba as well. So if anyone, for example, if they walk between this and go through the Hatim, their tawaf will not be accepted. Because this is a part of Kaaba and you go around it. So you shouldn't go, you know, uh, uh, shortcut through it. Although it's most possible, I don't think it's possible because there are always police and everyone is there, you know. So you go around it for your tawaf to be completed. And you, when you have chance, you may enter into it and pray to Rakat Salah and it will be regarded that you have prayed inside the Kaaba. SubhanAllah. So this is a 
Hatim. And, and this is Maqam Ibrahim, the bowl thing, that uh, the, the footprint of Ibrahim is kept there. This is Hajar Aswad. This corner is Hajar Aswad. You start from here, talk from here. We'll show more clearly, inshallah. Uh, can we switch up the lights so that it will be clear? <laughs> So this is how uh, this is how we'll do the ittiba, uh, like this person, like this person that will put our right uh, uh, side of the cloth under our arm and put on the left shoulder, keeping our right shoulder empty. This is the real light that we've been talking. From that building, you'll see these real lights coming out towards the Kaaba. So this is the light to tell you where to start your tawaf. So this is the this is the point where we start our tawaf from. So we'll go in, the, in line with that real light, then face to the Kaaba and raise our hands because in that corner is Hajar Aswad. Even if you cannot see the corner of the, the, the Hajar Aswad, you see the green light. You go in line with it, this and turn around. Uh, keeping your back towards the green light. You will see people are you know, facing towards the green light, which is not, you know, uh, this is not how you should do that. You should not you know, put your hands towards the green light. You should you know, put your hands to the Kaaba, no, to the Hajar Aswad. Now, this person is you know, facing to the uh, Kaaba, Hajar Aswad, like this, and bring this. This is how we should do. So this is green light. When we come to the green light, we turn around, we face to the Kaaba, Hajar uh, Aswad, and we point to the both hands, kiss it, and start walking like this. So you can see many children are there, mashallah. Sometimes there are not too many people, it gets easier to walk. Also on the uh, ground you can see the prayer uh, lines for Salah, how people pray is on the ground, facing the Kaaba. Another thing is that while we are doing tawaf, we shouldn't you know, look around uh, anywhere else. You should be focusing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even you shouldn't look at the Kaaba at that time because we are not you know, doing this tawaf for Kaaba. We are doing this tawaf for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our focus is not the Kaaba. Our focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at that time, you shouldn't look in you know, a Kaaba frequently and look now, you know, while you are not doing Tawaf, or this is a, a, a Ibadah to look at the Kaaba. It has been mentioned that 120 Rahmah is, you know, is descent in the Kaaba around all the time. 60 Rahmah for the people who are doing Tawaf. 40 Rahmah for the people who are praying. And 20 Rahmah for the people who are not doing anything, just, you know, gazing upon the Kaaba, subhanAllah. Shab Shumar Kaaba Shadifar Zagarov Riyakshab Bishtar Rahmat Naziloy Shaitar Rahmat Zara Tawaf Furin Tara Lagi Sallishtar Rahmat Zara Namaz Furin Tara Lagi Ar Bishtar Rahmat Zara Namaz Furin Tara Lagi Ar Bishtar Rahmat Zara Namaz Furin Tara Lagi Ar Bishtar Rahmat Zara Namaz Furin Tara Lagi Ki Duzash Shumar Kaaba Tawaf Furba Ki Shumar Bar Bar Kaaba Shadifar Firiya Saikdana Aapne Dekhba Ikano Shabhaare Panaya Diyo Se Bolo Building Yata Bolo Gori Diya Light Art Zara Jil Mil Ghorer Jab Aapne Saikdana Data Shaitani Distraction Data Shaitani Zinish Bana Diyo Se Manshur Mondi Abadi Ni Balagi and the destruction of Riva Saitana of our focus Tata Allah Ibadu Lagi. You shouldn't look at the clock and, and, and being distracted by this like this.
so green light is above the corner that what are the hojare aswa rukne yamani pohan diya mar bana atina fi duniya asadan prarambho hollam up to hojare aswa so you can keep your book in your hand and keep reciting the dua at the time you know, it's better uh, to uh, recite so when you finish your uh, seven rounds, pray to Raka Salah, then you look for that green light again. And you come to that green light. You, you can see people are you know, going out to us this way to find Safa. So you go there and you see the sign for Safa. This is uh, Maqam Ibrahim we mentioned before the gold thing inside this the footprint of Ibrahim alayhi salam you will see inshaAllah this is the door of the Kaaba the dua is accepted there people go there climb there you know put their hands on the door of the Kaaba and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is Hajar Aswad Now uh, they are proceeding to uh, Safa, so coming out from the Mataf, they are proceeding to uh, Safa. And around this area there are, there are cups for Zamzam water, you can drink Zamzam water. You can see the sign Ila Safa uh, to Safa. Now uh, you can go, you can do the ground floor or you can go upstairs as well. There is a sign for the stairs. You can take the stairs and go upstairs as well. So it can be done in two, three floors. This is the mountain Safa that is uh, covered by glasses. You go there, you can see people, you know, making dua facing to the uh, Qibla, to the Kaaba. So from here you can see the Kaaba. So you, you uh, face to the Kaaba, if, if you have a book, you can read from book, or you can the dua, any dua you can recite, and after that you do salam and start. You can see these people are having, you know, their shoulder is open, you, should have, you, you don't need to keep your shoulder open anymore. When you finish your tawaf, before salah you can cover your shoulder and make dua, then they did not you know, uncover, uh, they did not cover the shoulder. So from here you can see the Kaaba. After that, after that you walk on that side and this is the way to walk to Marwa. Do you know when you go from mountain to mountain, yes. is there like a specific time you're not allowed to go? No, you can so go any, any, time. any time, yes. No. Only at the time of Salah because people will be praying, you know, blocking the way. So at, at that time, you know, he'll, he'll know this in inshallah. However, there's no, no limit, time limit, you can go any time. So this is the way we go and to, to start our Sa'i. Now, uh, now just we left the mountain or, on our back. We started walking towards Marwa. This is the straight you know, path towards Marwa. And can you see the green lights on top of our uh, head? So this is the green light where if, when you go there, for men, you run there. You run in, in, the, in the place. You can, send, you can see men are running here. Women walk you know, normally. If, if, if you are with women, 
they can walk you know a bit slowly you can go around faster then after uh, the crossing that green light you can stand up then you can catch up with them take them with you <coughs> These are the you know, uh, wheelchair for people, elderly people who cannot walk. There are facilities for them to go by wheelchair. So this side you go to Marwa and other side you can see on the left side, side people coming back. This is the way you come back from Marwa to Safa. So you walk on the right side, and other uh, people will be coming back from their right side on the uh, on the other hand side. Right? So you can see people are coming back from Marwa, and this side people they are going to still to Marwa. So uh, you go at the end, and you find the uh, mountain Marwa. You come around. And you start make the one. when you go to Marwa again. Every time you go to Marwa, face to the Qibla, say again Bismillah, Allah Akbar, make dua, very short make dua, and then you start walking towards Safa again. So this is the Marwa uh, mountain. You can see it's in Arabic written Marwa, the Marwa. This is the Marwa mountain. So go near the Marwa and start walking to Safa from right hand side. Uh, this is how it's, uh, night look like. If, if you go on like three, uh, two, three o'clock, four o'clock in the night, you can sit very close to Kaaba. You can sit and uh, recite Quran. You can recite Tasbih. You can pray no full salam, Tajus salah, etc. This is just a video of outside of Haram, the street outside of Haram. Now this is a Masjid Aisha. Now if anyone wants to do extra Umrah, now if you want to do Umrah again, you have completed one Umrah, now you want to do Umrah again, then you have to go to a place called Tanaim, And there is a Masjid there called Masjid Aisha. Aisha Siddiqah, when she came with the Prophet وسلم, because she could not do Umrah with the Prophet وسلم, because of her illness. So when she was pure, she asked the Prophet وسلم, to do Umrah. The Prophet وسلم, asked her brother Abdul Rahman to take her to the place called Tanaim and to, redo, to start the you know, uh, Niyya for Umrah again and Ihram again. So she did Umrah Ihram from here, from there. This is why this, uh, they made a masjid over there. And anyone wants to do Umrah again after completing the first Umrah, they have to go there. The, uh, call Masjid Aisha, the name you'll see, taxis are calling people to go there, or buses are there. So you can go there, you know, put your ihram on, pray to the Kastra like before, and then you make intention for Umrah, come back again, do all the thing again, tawaf, sahih, you know, shaving your head or trimming your hair, it will be your other Umrah. So many people do three, four times a day. You know, those are uh, strong enough, they can do two, three times one day. So once you complete your umrah, you can do umrah from your father, from your mother, those who are your relatives, those who passed away. Uh, so if you do that, you'll get the reward first, and the, the people who intend for, they will get the reward as well. So it will not be lessened from your reward. And it's better to remember them by doing umrah for them. So this is the masjid. Masjid Aisha, the people will do ihram from. You can see the uh, red uh, curtain, other side is for women. So if women go there, they can do prayer for salah there and make intention from there too. <coughs> now, uh, our, okay, is there any question for starting from tawaf to the end? Okay. Yes. The talpia, you have to do it in that rhythm. What do you mean in rhythm? That melody, you know, the baykullah. Actually, it, 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 you don't have to do it in the melody. I can do it anywhere. However, it's better to recite, you know, like this. You will see people reciting. Okay, for talbiya, when you start your tawaf, talbiya is finished. No more talbiya after you starting your tawaf. After you your, your niyat for ta tawaf, no more talbiya. So you shouldn't recite any more talbiya. You'll be just reciting normal du'as and other other 
uh, recitations under the Quran or anything else, not talbiyah. When you do when you do uh, niyat for umrah again, if you want to do again, then you start talbiyah again up until you make niyat for tawaf. When you start niyat for tawaf, talbiyah is finished. Yes. Yes. Uh, taking a young child, so push chairs yes. in the haram, or they, on the first floor. Uh, for for push chair or wheelchair are, is not allowed to take in the ground. So you'll be doing the first floor, on the second floor, or on the roof. Okay. So you can do. Secondly, see in the videos, people uh, they end the stair and round is because of bags. <coughs> bag for valuables and things. Like yes. That. Is, that, is that allowed? Yes, it is allowed. I'll show you a bag here. Uh, so you can use one of these bags. So this box is essential in, in a sense because you have to take your shoes, a water bottle sometimes it need, needed, yeah, uh, or anything, mobile phone or anything, you can put in your, in your bag, you can tie around your uh, hip or in your, on your shoulder, so you can keep it, it's allowed to keep the bag. And just one final question, when traveling from Manchester, yes. um, on the plane you need to do some hours, yes. yes. what's the ruling on uh, the plane that's stolen? Uh, if if it is not possible to do udu, then you can do tayammu. So for tayammu, if you have a, a stone or a, 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 a mod, anything, shaksan, if you have anything, uh, a small pebble or stone would do the would do, would do, do tayammu. Now, the procedure of tayammu is make an intention of, I you know can't find water or I cannot touch water because of illness or anything, whatever reason, you make the intention that I'm doing tayammu. And uh, this is the first fourth for the Yamam. Second fourth is that you touch the stone with your hand or the uh, ground or whatever you are doing the with. You put your hand on that and then you uh, wipe your face once, whole face once. Then again you touch the stone or the uh, ground, whatever, again. And you wipe your right hand up to your elbow once, you know, whole hand, and then your left hand. So you don't have to touch again, just with the same touch. You know, you uh, wipe right hand first, then your left hand, and this will be end, end of your tayammum. Yes. So the Kaaba Sharif was exactly shamne ta hoa, the Ainul Kaaba. Now the Jamaat Jagat ta hoa Kaaba Sharif dekha jaye na, the Jihad Il Kaaba. Yes, so the Quran is also a form of the Quran. The Quran is also a form of the Quran. The Quran is also a form of the Quran. The Quran is also a the when we'll be praying in Masjid Haram in Jama'a, because the Imam is Mukim, they'll be praying all four rakat. We have to pray all four rakat. Even if you join at the last rakat, when the Imam finishes Salah, you know you stand up and make up the rest of rakat, and you'll be completing all four rakat. Musafir avostai amra jaya tu sairat tu zakat duira khat namaz fori mu, kintu Imam or fori jono fori mu, or Imam jodi sairat Imam jodi sairat fori bamra complete sairat khat fori mu. then you will not be regarded as a traveler, you will be regarded as Mokim, and you will pray a complete Salah at that time. However, because at the, at the traveling for Hajj or Umrah, no one stays in one place for 15 days, because we'll be going to Mina, we'll be going to Arafah, we'll, we'll have intention to travel around, so we'll not be Mokim anywhere. Even if, if you go 15 days or 50 days, it doesn't matter. Same for Hajj. And for Tabriyah as well. Yes. So you start the day after the Ihram. Ihram, yes. They say you do the Ihram in the Dain. Yes. And then you go to Jeddah, and then yes. from Jeddah to Mecca. All of this time you... Yes, you, you, you the main, your main word, this main recitation is Talbiya. And yes. whether to make it a loud voice or just uh, normally... This is better. It's, uh, for men, they should recite it loudly. Okay. For men, should, they should recite it loudly. 
So, uh, any other question in Tawaf, Umrah, before you complete Umrah? Okay. So, if you are intention to do two or three, as you said, yes. it's better the first and second time to just trim your hair instead of shaving. It, it can be anyway, you know. If, if, There's no hair anymore. Even, right? even those who, who ask Umrah in the morning and the evening, they go to Barbar, Barbar just, you know, put the razor up and the, the shirt. And for the people who doesn't have hair at all, if they just, you know, uh, uh, pass hair, uh, razor, this is this part. This should, you know. Yeah. 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 So in Hatim, you can go any at any time, you know, at, at the time of Tawaf, you shouldn't go because you are doing important job. After you completion, completing that, you go at other time or any other Salah, you can try to enter and pray to Raka Salah. Okay, a very important question for uh, women. If a woman starts their monthly period in the state of Ihram, they or even before the uh, doing it for their ihram, if, if anyone have you know a monthly illness, what they do? So they can do everything else. They can start their ihram. They can make their intention. However, they cannot pray to rakat salah for making ihram. If it if it start before their ihram, they'll be deciding talbiya, all the duas, everything. They'll be joining with anyone else, everyone doing everything. However, only thing they'll not be allowed is they'll not be allowed to enter into the masjid. So they will not enter into the masjid until they are clean. So if they don't enter into the masjid, they cannot do tawaf as well. Tawaf is allowed in that state as well. So they will be waiting until they are pure, until they are clean. Once they are clean, they will uh, go into the masjid haram and they will do umrah, the tawaf and sa'i. Now until then, three days, four days, five days, doesn't matter how many days, a, a woman will be in the state of ihram. So all the restrictions, they have to follow. They have to maintain all the restrictions. They will not be able to you know, do shower with soap. They will not be able to you know, remove their hair. Or uh, uh, they will not be able to, you know, they are not allowed to cover their face or hands. So these are the restrictions. It will remain up until they complete their, you know, umrah. So three days, four days, they have to wait. They have to be in the restriction. So this is the first, uh, uh, now, or if anyone, you know, while they are doing tawaf, or then the masjid, or doing sa'i, if, if, if they are, you know, uh, if it starts while they are doing tawaf, they have to stop, come out, and, you know, they'll have to wait up until they're clean, and go back, do their tawaf and sa'i later. If they've completed their tawaf, they came to sa'i, and then it starts, they can continue and complete their uh, sa'i. Because for sa'i, it is not uh, obligatory to have uh, purification. Other question is, is it allowed to take medication from GP not to start the uh, period before leaving UK? Yes, it is allowed. You, you can do, you can take. However, if you leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's fine as well. And if you take medication, that is allowed as well to Stop uh, your mouth in this case. If you like cut yourself and then you start bleeding, what do you yes. have to do if you're going around the car? Like, uh, well, because uh, the blood is impure, isn't it? So if, if you bleed like this, if you have to you know, uh, do whatever you have to do as an urgency, you clean it, you put your uh, something, and then you come back and complete your tawaf. Yes. <coughs> Any other questions? You know how you said when you finish the law? Yes. You read two wajib. Wajib salah, yes. And where do you read it again? You just read in front of uh, Maqam Ibrahim. So Maqam Ibrahim, you know that gold yeah. thing? Yeah. So you go in front of there, keep Maqam Ibrahim in your front, and then Kaaba is in your front as well. What well, yeah. people blocking your path? Yeah, so you go on, on, on the, on the uh, air as back as possible. So it's as people are going to... No, it doesn't matter, yeah. Also, another, another very important ruling is, in Haram, Masjid Haram, you know, in, the, in our Masjid, it is Haram to walk in front of people, isn't it? However, in Masjid Haram, it is allowed 
to walk in front of people as long as you are not walking you know just in front of them the the place they do sit down so a, a person needs to do sit up to this you don't walk in front of him while he's praying he can go little further in front of him so it is allowed to walk in front of a musalli in masjid haram it is only for that masjid for that for the for the haram not anywhere else okay briefly about a ziyar of madina tul munawwara madina tul munawwara is a place where our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is and all the thing we have, we are doing now hajj umrah tawaf ziyara everything is for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it is it is a duty for uh, for a muslim to go and visit the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam aqida of ahlus sunnah jamaa is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is alive is in the grave if you go there give salam to him he hears you he replies back to you however we do not hear we do not hear but he gives he he, he knows you he really gives salam back to you so it's you know a sunnah you go there you give salam to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so again when you go into the madina to the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are some recommended duas that you recite when you enter into the madina and then when you enter into masjid the nabi again you recite bismillah wal bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah allahumma fil dunubi allahumma iftah li abwaaba wa rahmatik you enter into the masjid now for women there's different there are a little bit you know a difference from makkah to madina in makkah women can pray you know anywhere you know uh, however there are some gates are specified for women it's better for them to go through this you know specified areas however you know sometimes they can pray in group in one side men can pray on other side in masjid an nabawi will not have chance like this in masjid an nabawi there are spaces for women only gates for women only you enter to this gate and for men is separate for when you know going to the ziyar of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again as a different for a woman than men men will be you know, going through one door women will be taken in the only in three specified time usually after fajr after zuhur and after isha after fajr after zuhur after isha these are three time they call people you know women there are women police is there so they will take you there and uh, you will be uh, doing ziyar of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you will be praying in rauda now uh, what is rauda rauda is a place that the prophet sallam mentioned my my home from my home and uh, uh, between my house and between the mimbar is the place uh, a part of jannah subhanallah rauda to me riyad in jannah so it is a uh, mustahab sunnah to go in there to pray to rakat salat to make dua because it is a part of jannah when you enter there you are entering into jannah subhanallah so for women they will allow three times after fajr after zuhur and after isha usually and, and they will take you there you know uh, they do not take all women at the same time sometimes they, they you know uh, divide into continents so they will call first you know european african then you know india pakistan bangladesh like this they will divide into groups so that it be easy for people so you know you wait where they call and wait for the people to go and come out how do you know which part is in you know, a raudat riyadat mein riyad ul jannah and what is what part is normal masjid of masjid nabawi the, all the carpets in masjid nabawi are red all the carpets in masjid nabawi are red however the place where raudat riyad ul jannah is the uh, piece of jannah is the carpet are green so you will see the difference from other part of the masjid so if you want to pray in there it is it's very crowded all the time you wait there some people come out other people come in because a little bit only small place small place so you wait for them to come out and then you go now this is the masjid an nabawi in madinah al munawwara you enter through the gates and go forward for the masjid for visiting the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is a gate called babu salam so this is a an light lit up gate is called babu salam you go through babu salam you enter and go straight to you know go to the grave of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the green dome where the prophet sallallahu alaihi was buried under uh, the best place in dunya and akhirah not only in, in the world even you know uh, very it's better than the arsh azim the scholars mention because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't sit on arsh this is the place where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is 
So this is better even than the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is outside of the, of the Masjid al Nabawi and outside of the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is the gate called Babu Salam where the men will enter into to go to, you know, give salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So you go through this alleyway all the way down there and I will show you the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So on our left hand side we can see the gate. This is the gate for uh, the Ardhatu Miriyad al Jannah. This is the place where uh, on our, uh, the piece of Jannah is. You go inside and pray to Raka Salah. This is the uh, grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Inside this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's grave. Not this gate, you will see this gate and then on the right hand side other two, you know, uh, shape like this, gate like this. The first one is nothing there. On the second one, you will see written Muhammadur Rasulullah in Arabic. In that line you go and say, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah.